Okay, and we're back. Let's get this clock started. All right. So, we are starting week four online, or as we sometimes say, remote classes. And we are going to do things a little bit differently this week. When I was in the Marine Corps, my sergeant used to say, you gots to be flexible or you gots to be flexible. We have to be flexible, adaptable. We have to be able to make changes because the world is not constant. Things are always changing, evolving. So again, as usual, we're going to repeat one part by the first five minutes of class being something that's not really important, not something that's on your test but is more general kind of almost free talk, me just talking English. So I'm going to open up this window a little bit so you can see a little bit more of me and the magical thing that hangs by my door. So let's see. <clears throat> what are the new things in life today? Well, if you're paying attention to the world, you'll know that uh, Italy and Spain have horrible, horrible coronavirus conditions. Uh, Italy has more than one million, one million, one million people who have been confirmed with the coronavirus. And Korea has something like 10,000. And that's pretty amazing because the population of Italy and the population of Korea is not so very, very different. So it's definitely impacted there much more than here. And uh, Spain is also doing very, very poorly. The United States is doing very, very poorly. They are over one million in coronavirus confirmed cases and they kind of started much later than than Italy and Spain who of course started much later than Korea who started much later than China so we can't compare everything exactly except to maybe look at the curve and try to figure out how the curve is progressing and it doesn't tell us very much just yet but it looks bad for the United States. And Korea, after it had its steep climb, let's see, then it has almost leveled off. We still have a few new cases, like 100 cases per day, which is not nothing. I mean, it's very important, especially to the people who are sick. But 100 new cases a day is much better than 1,000 new cases and people are getting healthier. So what we're worried about in Korea, and finally every country must worry, is about this kind of second bump, right? It goes up, it comes down, and then it goes up again. Maybe not as high, but when we talk about pandemic, pandemic, a global academic, uh, global epidemic, epidemic, everybody's catching the sickness. When we talk about pandemics, history tells us that there usually is this kind of a second bump. So we have to be worried about that. All right. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention is that last recorded class, and I think also in our Zoom class, I mentioned that I would not be doing a lot of review. I would not continue to put lots of information up about our previous class and our previous previous class. So what I'm going to do with the past videos is set them, adjust them, so Chi maybe, install a review or a watch again function so that after the time limit of the, you know, you have to watch in the first week or you're not here, 
I'm gonna adjust it so that anybody can watch it later and secondly I have a YouTube channel and my recorded lectures are on the YouTube channel so you can see those anytime but the other side we are not going to share the zoom recordings that's just like a live class in the classroom and we're not going to share those if you miss the zoom recording then it's just like missing a real class you missed I'm trying to get this other light to show better it's not doing very well for me right my left side is darker than my right side I have a lamp on each side it's not balancing very well don't know why hmm. Anyway, um, so, das ist das, this, that is that, I won't be doing a lot of review, so as I shrink this front screen down, you'll see that, yes, it's the, it's the seventh online session, week four, it's the seventh, because the second and fourth sessions, uh, the se the sixth and fourth sessions, right? The sixth and the fourth sessions were Zoom sessions. So I'm only putting up this slide for our recorded sessions. And we plan, at this point, the university has announced that we will have seven weeks of these re of remote classes remote classes distance classes now will i have recordings every week well we're going to talk about that again last week in the zoom sessions i asked for you to vote do you want to have two zoom sessions in a week or to have one zoom session and one recorded session and the vote was to have one recorded session so we're going to kin continue that for a little while and I will check again about student opinions whether we should have two live classes or one live class I'm doing this recording for both my day and evening classes. Uh, EPA 1 has a day session and a night session and I use the same recording for both. The Zoom sessions are separate but the recording is for both. And we have to keep in mind that the night students have a much tougher scheduling problem than the day students. So when it comes to a recorded class it's much more convenient for night students than a live class so that's one thing I keep in mind is that night students uh, one zoom is maximum convenience for them but we'll see nothing is decided yet nothing is decided yet um, some bad news about zoom because there have been more and more hacking attempts on Zoom, some things had to change in Zoom. The Zoom management have made changes. And those changes include the fact that there will be a new password system required. Now, I don't know if that's going to impact our classes. I've forgotten something, so I'm going to do two things at the same time. I don't know if that's going to impact our classes because in our classes, we have already, or I have already registered our classes in the system for 14 weeks actually 15 weeks 
So if we never get back to if we never get back to the live classroom at Kinembe, all of my second class for the week sessions are registered. And they were registered with no password. But the changes in the system might, maybe, I don't know, the changes in the system might require that we install a password. And I don't know that yet. So we're going to find out. Uh, my night class is going to find out on Wednesday night. And if you need a password, I will send it to you by text message. Or if I find out before class, uh, then I will put it on the CTL Hacksup Jario in the notices section. The same place that has your Zoom link, different link for Wednesday night class, different link for Thursday day class, different link for Friday day class. In that same place where is the link, I will also put the password. But right now, I don't know if we need a password. So we're going to find out. And that's one of the things I said in the beginning is we have to be flexible. Uh, we are all learning at the same time. And this session is going to continue to evolve and make changes. So we do the best we can. All right. Now, I don't have a slide in the PowerPoint that lists the review as I did in the third week and in the second week because I'm not going to do that anymore. It's your job to take notes. But I am going to mention some of the things that we have done that you want to self-review and keep a mind on. One is listening logs. Soon I'm going to ask you to send me a copy of your listening logs. When I do that, I'm going to say, you can send me a photo, you can send me uh, a, a copy of the file, if you're keeping it in a file, if it's just a photo of what's in your notebook, doesn't matter. But I'm not asking for that now, and when I do, it'll be in the assignment section. And it's just a quick check by me to see that you're doing it. In the same way, there will come a time when I ask to take a look at your notebooks. And that's not really grading, that's just making sure that you're doing it, that you're doing okay, that you're getting the key information. Again, that will be in the assignments section, the quadje section on the CTL. And I will tell you what to do and how to do. It's not very complicated. But I want to make sure that you're doing okay. And if you're not doing okay, I want to give you feedback. All right. So, listening logs, keeping notebooks. We're working with Zoom and there could be a password. Uh, in the Zoom chats, I think for both of them, I mentioned how with Zoom with technology, we have to do three things at the same time. We have the language problem, we have the content problem, what we're talking about in class, and we have a technology problem that makes three, right? The technology problem because we're using technologies that are newer, that are different. It took you a little time to learn cacao. I'm still learning cacao, right? and Arehangul and MS Word and Excel and all the other things that you learned on technology, you have to learn it step by step. So we have some time, we're getting there, but now we're in week four and you should be catching up. Okay? Your camera for our class should be working. Get it figured out. You need a camera for our class, please, because your partners will really appreciate a camera. You need to be able to open up the 
chat box and write a convers write something in the chat. You need to be able to give me reactions, a thumb up, a hand wave. You need to make sure that your voice is working, of course, your audio. That might mean earphones, but it might not. Okay, some computers don't want to use the 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 jack that is earphone and where's my earphones? Say I lost my earphones. Uh, they don't want to work with that. Instead, they have two plugs, right? Like my headset. My headset has two plugs, and conveniently, the green goes in the green, and the pink or red goes in the pink or red. So that's pretty easy. But if you have earphones from your cell phone, here we go. Ah. They have only one plug. Let's see if we can put this where you can see it. There we go. They have only one plug. And the plug has three areas. And one area is for the pink and one area is for the green, but you can't do it that way. So if you're using earphones in a computer that has only one plug, it doesn't work. Now, um, you can use two different earphone sets, and one set is for your ear, and one, s that's interesting, one set for your ear? No, sorry. One part goes in your ear, and the mic, where's my mic, where's my mic? I lost my mic, but these are defective anyway. The, the mic might be a different cable. That might work, that might maybe work, but in fact, this single plug it's actually different from a double plug. Uh, and I don't know if you can see it. It looks like it's the same here. But in fact, they work a little bit differently. There's one extra little connection. So it probably will fit OK. But in some cases, it might not. OK, in some cases, it might not. So. Get your technology figured out. When you have a job, your company's going to expect you to get your technology figured out. Our university is requiring all professors to do remote teaching, but they gave us almost no support. They, they told us, oh, you can use this program. We got a license to use this program for recording. Um, I don't use it. It's, it's a good program. It does a lot of good things. It's a little complex. But I chose to do something differently, and it has a free version, and I've used it. But I usually use a paid version, so that's my money. The university did not give me a webcam. They did not give me a microphone. Uh, you know, it's, it's part of my job as a professor. And it's part of your job as a student to adapt to new learning environments. And I'm really sorry that it costs money. That part is unfortunate. That part is is not good. But it's reality. Um, my son went to university in U.S. And his classes, many of them had an online part of the class. And it's his responsibility to have a computer and a camera. And, and you know, in U.S., universities are all closed, too. They're all doing remote classes also. And there's no support for students. You gots to adapt. You gots to be flexible. Okay? Alright, so ah, let's see. Zoom is covered. I am checking attendance. And when I do, the thing I'm marking just now, so far, is attendance in the Zoom. Now, right now it's Sunday night. Uh, tomorrow, uh, that's when I'm recording. This is Sunday night. Tomorrow, Monday, I will go back through the videos, the recorded lectures that are presented on the CTL and look for attendance because it's there. It shows how many people watch the video completely. 
and that will be the other part of the attendance. So video watching and Zoom participation are two parts of your attendance. None of the assignments so far are heavy points. Nobody is missing out on an A plus because of assignments yet. But everything counts a little bit. You know, one point here, one point there, one point here. Some of our later assignments are going to be two points, three points. All right, the listening log is a big deal. Class participation, if we ever get back, if we ever get back to a live classroom, participation is easy to measure. If we don't, well, it's more challenging for me. But I do jump around in Zoom. I look in different groups to see who's working, who's not. So far, technology is difficult. No minus points. Okay, no minus points for participation in Zoom. If you have a problem in Zoom, send me a message immediately in the class time. Send me a text message. Send me a cacao. Send me an email. Maybe I can help you in class time. Maybe I can't. But if I get the message, and show me a photograph of your screen, if I get the message, I can say, okay, technology problem, not absent. Okay, you're here. But if I don't get a message during class time, it doesn't count. Okay, from this week, week four, if you're not in the Zoom, and I don't get an emergency message with a photo of your screen showing me the problem, then you're not here. You get two free absences in my class. Two, two, two. I don't want to know that my friend is sick and I took her to the hospital. I don't want to know. It doesn't count. Your boss at your company doesn't care. It doesn't count. Right? If you are sleeping in the hospital, you're not absent. If someone in your family has died, you're not absent. Right? Those, are, those are life crises that we can't change. But if you have a cold <coughs> and you go to the doctor, go to the doctor not in my class time. In somebody else's class time, but not mine. Because I don't want to see a note from the doctor. I, I won't count it. I won't count it. With Zoom, if you have to, you can use your phone. I want you to use computer, please, please, please. It's easier for everyone. But you can possibly use your phone. So really no reason to not be in the Zoom class. And this recording, you have all week to watch it. All right. So open your books. You should have your books. You should always have your book before every class. If you have not bought the book, buy the book. Okay. I gave you two chapters in this book in PDF. And today we're going to start chapter two. So you're running out of time. All right. Next week's class, week five, if you don't have a book, you can't join the class. So you got to get a book. Online delivery is working. Bookstores have this book. Buy the book. All right. So we're on page six, which if you look at my book, you can see, if we're careful, up here somewhere, you can see there is a star, kind of a star on my page. That means it's important. That means it's on the text. I mentioned this in Zoom. We're going to... Now, read this together, and I hope you read it before. I hope that you always look ahead in the book and read things in the book. Don't do the activities, but at least read things or look and see what's coming. I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to read it quietly to yourself, together, and then we're going to do the exercises. So. 
page six. Are you ready? Titles and names. By the way, what's a title? You know what a name is. What's a title? A title is something that we give you that shows your function, your role, your office. So, Sajanim is a title, right? Mister is a title. Professor is a title. Doctor is a title. Reverend is a title. Reverend? Reverend means minister, like Moksanim, something like that. All right. Number one, read the article. Page six. In English-speaking countries, use Mr. plus a last name for men. Okay, remember, I'm teaching you to use family name or surname because in Korea, last name is first, first name is last. But this book is written for American English, so they say last name. There are two titles for women. Ms. or Mrs. Okay, M-S. Ms. sounds like M-I-Z. Or Mrs. It's best to use Ms. if you aren't sure which title to use. Miss is usually not used as a title for women nowadays. Okay, now give everybody a chance to catch up. If they're not already, I'm going to shrink me and open the book to page six. Everybody who has a book should have the book. If you don't have the book, here it is. And I'm going to read it again. There's my star. Titles and names. Titles, as I said. All right. In English-speaking countries, use Mr. MR period plus the last name for men. There are two titles for women, Ms. or Mrs. It's best to use Ms. if you aren't sure which title to use. Miss is usually not used as a title for women nowadays. Traditionally, yes, but in the 21st century, not so much. So, my university women, if you wish to be called Miss, that's fine. But do understand that in many Western countries now, Miss is not much used. Ms. says married not married I don't know I don't care not important she didn't tell me with mister I don't know if you're married or not married so Ms. again same like mister married not married I don't know I don't care it's not important what name do you use with a title back to the reading what name do you use with a title? Do you use? Do you use? A little challenging. Do you use? Just think in Korea, the soy milk. Do you? Do you? you? Do you? you? Do you use? Use? What name do you use with a title? Oops. Sorry about that. What name? Do you use with a title? What happened? I lost my highlighting. There we go. What name do you use with a title? In most Western countries, the order of names is first or given name, last or family name. For example, Louisa de Sousa. Okay, this one's tough. This one is a Portuguese name. And with Portuguese names, there's often two part or even three part names. So in this case, use the family name when you meet somebody. For example, say Ms. De Souza to Luisa De Souza. Sometimes we have to ask. I'm doing a lot of work nowadays with people from Italy, and I always have to ask them, and from Spain a little bit, which way do you want me to say your name? 
Because sometimes they shorten it in English and just use one part. It's really confusing. Don't be afraid to ask. In English, we ask questions. We present less and we ask questions more. And that makes conversation. Paragraph three. People use the family name with titles in China, Japan, and Korea too. But the order of name is different. Family name, then first names. Chen Ji Hei is Mr. Chen, not Mr. Ji Hei. Right. Now there's one problem is that in some countries like Vietnam, even though the name order could be family name and then given name, because certain names are so common, such as in Vietnam, Nguyen, N-G-U-Y-E-N, is more common in Vietnam than Kim is in Korea. They don't say Mr. Nguyen. They say Mr. Ha Lu. His name is Nguyen Ha Lu, but they call him Mr. Ha Lu. Because there's too many Nguyen. All right, anyway, in general, we would call somebody by their family name unless they tell you different. Mr. Chen Ji Hei is Mr. Chen. What about first names? In the U.S. and Canada, first names are okay when you first meet. If someone says, please call me Lui, use the first name. It's polite and friendly. But this is important. If someone says, we don't just call somebody by their first name without permission. All right. Now, it is possible to say, may I call you? For example, when I pick up somebody's business card, this is my business card, right? I could say, oh, may I call you Robert? Can I call you Robert? May I call you Robert? Can I call you Robert? Then I would say, oh, please call me Rob. Rob's my nickname. Rob is not on my name card. Right. Or if I say, oh, hi, I'm Robert Dickey. I'm a professor at Gaming University. Nice to meet you. You would say, hi, Professor Dickey. And then I say, oh, please call me Robert or, or Rob. Please call me Robert or Rob. It's better to be safe. It's better to use the title <clears throat> and the family name until somebody says you can use their given name. Because what if you say, oh, can I call you Robert? Well, I'm your professor. I don't want you to call me Robert. I want you to call me Professor. Right? You know some professors like that, right? You do. I'm not like that, but some professors are like that. So you don't just walk up to, to some old professor and say, he says, I'm Professor Kim Jong Jong, uh, invent a name, Kim Mo Mo. And, and you say, oh, can I call you Mo Mo? And you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can't call me Mo Mo. I am Professor. So be sure to ask. If somebody says, please call me Robert, please call me Lui, then you can do that. Or if you feel a little bold, adventurous, you could say, can I call you Robert? Can I call you Re? May I call you Robert? So may and can, fine, fine, not important, different. All right. Now, we have a small exercise lower on the page. <clears throat> Let me disable this. And then, now we have a secret here. In the book, it says, mark the following sentences. True, false, or I don't know. Maybe you have not seen an English book or a study book that includes I don't know. Why? In Korea, I don't know sounds like you're a bad student. You didn't study. Why you don't know? But actually in English, I don't know is a good answer. I don't know can mean, as I said right here, you didn't tell me. I don't know because you didn't tell me. 
similarly, I don't know could be, I'm not quite sure. Could be both. The information is incomplete or the information is not enough. Okay? But I don't know could also mean, oh, I didn't study, I didn't do my homework. But I don't know does not only mean I'm bad. I don't know can be, you're bad, you didn't tell me. Alright, so we have three options, true, false, I don't know. <coughs> I'm going to read these to you. And then, I'm going to give you time to mark it. And then, we're going to go back and review. Now, if I can, I will raise this up. Uh, we can't see all at one time, but we'll start this way. Number one, uh, letter A. Ms. and Mrs. are titles. True? False? I don't know. Check one. If you don't have a book, you should be marking things down on a piece of paper. I'm not going to give you this... I'm not going to check your work here, but the information in this reading can be on your test. Right? Can be on your test. And we're doing it in the book. And we're doing it in our class. So, it's in the book, and we lectured it. There's a good chance it could be on the test, right? So Ms. and Mrs., are they titles? Yes. In English-speaking countries, use Mr. plus a fast name for men. In English-speaking countries, use Mr. plus a last name for men. There are two titles for women, Ms. and Mrs., okay? Mr., Ms., Mrs. are titles. Also professor, also doctor, okay? Titles. Lieutenant in the police or in the army. Okay. B. Mr. is a title for men. Well, I just told you. Yeah. Ms., Mrs., and Mr. is a title. C. A title is the same thing as a name. Title is the same thing as a name. Not true. Mm, probably false. Somebody might say, I don't know, because it didn't say exactly. But the best answer is false. I'm going to scroll up a little bit so we can get and all this here and I'm going to mark. So, Mrs. and Mrs. are titles. That's true. Notice that I made an X. In the U.S., X is one of the ways that we mark an answer. Mr. is a title for men. That's true, we could also make a check. A title is the same thing for a name. Well, as I said, it didn't say exactly, so if somebody wanted to mark in this one, they could, but it's not really the answer that I would give. I would say this one is the best answer. Now, in Korea, you will often do dongarami, right? A circle. Circle for your answer. But in U.S., we don't do that. When I first came to Korea, uh, no, when I first had my children going to school and they came home with their homework or my wife graded their homework, I saw all these big red circles and I thought, oh my gosh, my students, my, my children, they're stupid, right? They got all these all these zero, you know, no points. 
but then my children were happy because that circle meant okay, right? Dongarami is a good thing. So there's a culture difference. So I suggest you not mark circles because it's scary to foreigners. Check or X. I know Korea X means no or bad. So there's a culture difference. Letter D. In Western countries, use the first name, then the family name. Well, I hate this question. Because we've talked about first name, family name, uh, given name. But yeah, in the, the, the answer according to the book would be use the first name first and the family name last. Alright, so up here it says, use Ms. Sousa to Louisa to Sousa. But it's not very clear. Okay, one thing you need to think about is your TOEIC test. In a TOEIC test, they don't really care what is the right answer in the world. They care what is the right answer according to the information they give. So if we look up at the very top of this screen we can just barely see because I have things out of rolled out of order. First given name then last family name. For example Louisa de Souza. So for letter D the correct answer is true. The TOEIC test follows the reading. Letter E. Louisa de Souza is not married. True, false, I don't know. In the reading, we see Ms. de Souza. And as I told you, Ms. Married, not married. I don't know. I don't care. It's not important. You didn't tell me. So the correct answer for E is, I don't know. You didn't tell me. F. It's okay to use first names when you first meet someone in the USA or Canada. <sighs> Again, follow the TOEIC rule. The book says first names are okay when you first meet. I think it's not necessarily okay, especially if the other person is much older, but we're following the book, and the book says it's true. On my midterm test, I'd like you to say, maybe. All right. If you feel comfortable with that person, you can use first names, but if you don't know them very well, or if there's an age gap, then maybe no. Gee, the Order of names in China, Japan, and Korea is the same as most Western countries. The answer is false according to the reading, and mostly false in the real world. Although last week there was a newspaper article that talked about how Japan, in Japanese, say family name, then given name, but when Japanese put their names into English, they write uh, given name first and then family name as Western style, but now they want to change that. So the Prime Minister of Japan in English is always called uh, Shinju, Shinju uh, Abe. His family name is Abe. So Japanese custom is in English write family name second, but now Prime Minister Abe wants the world to change to put Japanese names writing in English the same as writing in Japanese. We'll see if he has success. Okay. So again, the answers here are the kinds of answers I might ask you on your midterm test talking about family name. Okay, so the talk about section in this uh, is not very useful for us because we've already talked about what's the order in Korean and then do you use your first name with friends, co-workers, or when you first meet someone? Well, if you're a university student, you probably use your, your given name, right? Now, my style, when I talk to students, if I don't know you 
quite well. Probably I will always call you Ms. Lee, Mr. Jung, Ms. Kim. Sometimes I'll say Miss. That's because I'm old, okay? I'm from uh, my childhood where we called people Miss and it meant that I'm not going to date you. <laughs> Basically, it meant I'm not going to date you. Um, and then young women before they married, when they were marriable, marriageable, we say, we also called them Miss. So Miss was used a lot when I was a young boy in the South. But that custom has changed. We're not 1960s anymore. Yeah, Chan Gubek Yukshit Nyan. It's my childhood. I'm old. I'm an Oshipageki. Right? I was born in 1958. So, uh, we don't use Miss anymore, but sometimes I still slip. But usually I will say Ms. Kim. Ms. Lee. If I get to know you well, or if we have many, many Ms. Kim or Ms. Lee, and I kind of know, I might say your given name, you know, Hua Zheng, are you ready to, like that, okay, um, that's my way, everybody has their style, their way, I usually am a little formal with my students, I think you deserve respect, you're not high school kids, so I want to give you the respect of an adult, all right, now, we're going to go to the next page in the book, the top of the page is says it's about writing. We're not going to do the writing assignment. Don't worry. Pass. Scroll down past the writing. At the bottom of the page, before we start chapter 2, chapter 2 is our online class, our, our Zoom class. We'll do chapter 2. The bottom of the page is a listening exercise. So you need a piece of paper so that you can test yourself. I'm not going to collect this information. This information will not be on your test. It's your listening practice. We're going to do numbers because numbers are hard in Korea. So please get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. If you're lazy, you can write in blood. I got my knife here. I can cut my finger. Where's my knife? Where's my knife? Uh, anyway, I lost it. Where's my knife? Okay, cut myself with a, with a pen. <laughs> right? You can write in blood. I don't care. But please write these numbers down so we can check it. I'm going to play the recording. You're going to hear the numbers. And then we'll play it back again. And we'll walk through it more slowly. So, the first one, number four, there are A, B, C, D, E, five different numbers to hear. In number five, there is A, B, C, D, E, five numbers with a city name, but you don't have to write the city name, okay? So, number four, A, B, C, D, E. Let's start. Page 7. Numbers. Exercise 4. Listen. On a piece of paper, write the phone numbers you hear. A. 9815552793 Okay, now I'm going to play those two back. Just to help you. Page 7. Numbers. Exercise 4. Listen. On a piece of paper, write the phone numbers you hear. A. 2105558047 Four six V nine eight one five 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 
C zero six two five 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 one six four seven D eight two eight five 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 nine three two two E seven oh seven Five 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 zero eight eight zero three toes. Okay, I'm gonna play it again. We're gonna check our work. I'll play the recording and then I'll tell you my numbers. Page seven. Numbers. Exercise four. Listen. On a piece of paper. Write the phone numbers you hear. A. 210-555-8046. Got that? What'd you get? 210-555-8046. 80 or 981-555-2793. Okay. 981. Got that 555 again, which we remember is a... Whoops. 555. 555 means it's a nonsense number, 2793, or a telephone company service number. C zero six two five 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 one six four seven. Aha, zero six two. Is that Guangzhou? Can't remember. Zero six two five 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 one six four seven. Or somebody might say 1647. D. 828-555-9322. 828-555-9322. Whoops. Eight two eight five 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 ninety three twenty two E seven oh seven five 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 zero eight eight zero Seven oh seven. Well, that was a famous airplane, right? Five five five. Zero eight eight zero. Okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing for part five. Page 7, Exercise 5. Listen. You will hear parts of addresses. Write only the numbers. A. 325 Park Street. Okay, we're just writing the number. You don't have to write the street name. Addresses. Write only the numbers. A. 325 Park Street. B. Madrid 28020. C. 
Tokyo 163. D. 849 Delaware Avenue. E. Sao Paulo. 01046002. Did you get those? Okay. Let's try it again. Page 7 will hear parts of addresses. Write only the numbers. A. 325 Park Street. Okay. Three two, three two five, Park Street. P. P. I'm gonna go ahead and write this out. P A R K, Street. B. B. Madrid twenty eight o two o. Okay, so now we have a postal code for the city of Madrid. Madrid. 28020 C Tokyo 163 And another postal code T O K Y O 163 And Japan's a very interesting case some countries are like this the postal codes can be different numbers. For example, postal codes in Tokyo are usually only three digit, 163, 142, like that. But when you go out into the provinces, then the postal code can have four or five numbers. I really don't understand this, but it's how they do it. Okay, D. D. 849 Delaware Avenue. And we're back to a street name, a street address, 849 Delaware Avenue. Now, Delaware is a state in the U.S., but many cities give their street names the name of a state, or the name of another city, or the name of U.S. presidents, or the names of different kinds of trees. So I'm from San Diego, California, and downtown streets are 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, da, 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 numbers that way. But going the other direction, we start with ash, A-S-H, which is a kind of tree, then beech, B-E-E-C-H, another kind of tree, then cedar, then date, then elm, then fig, then uh, guava, um, da, 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 da. so often cities use names of trees or states or president or other cities for street names. Last thing. Letter E. E. Sao Paulo. 01046002. And that one is long. Sao Paulo. A famous city in Brazil. And the number is Zero one zero. Forty six. Zero zero two or double o two. I'm going to double check one that one because that one's hard. It's not strange in English to say, pardon me. Say again. Can you tell me again? I'm sorry. I didn't catch that one more time. E. Sao Paulo. Zero one. 046-002. And you can see my order was different than theirs because I said zero, whoops, I said zero one zero, like a cell phone number in Korea, but they said zero one and then they said zero four six, but I said zero one zero forty six. 46, and then I said 002. I can't type. So they said 01, 046, 002. They did threes. 
I said in English we do one Z's and two Z's, remember, for phone numbers? Well, they did three Z's. 01, 046, 002. And that's possible. As I said, in Singapore, they often blend things. In England, they blend numbers differently than what Americans are used to. So, that's our recorded session for today. Our next class meeting, our Zoom meeting, we're going to start on page 8, which is chapter 2. And you do have that. Whoops. There we go. We do have all of chapter 2 in the book. And I hope you look forward, look ahead, see what's going on. Don't cheat on the uh, partner work. All right? But go ahead and look at the first three pages. And you can go ahead and move all the way up and look at the reading if you want. It's going to talk about greetings. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next class. Please do keep up. Don't fall behind in your assignments or you're going to die. It's a lot of work to do.